I, I mean, I'm sure you've heard this a lot over the last few months. I absolutely adored this movie. It's so amazingly well balanced. I mean, it's satire. It's funny at times. It's kind of over the top in certain situations, but it's grounded and profound at the same time. I mean, the balancing of themes and tonalities is is masterful. This must be up there with one of the best scripts you guys have ever read. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, and, and I like your description. Over the top, but grounded. <laughs> that was the intent. Yeah. <laughs> now the script was was wonderful. Really, from the first scene, uh, it, it was clear that you know, Cord was onto something that was timely, uh, that was much needed in terms of the discussion that uh, that uh, that it was focused on, and also that you know he was fluent in the language and the issues that uh, that. Uh, that are expressed in that scene. And that, uh, you know, these are conversations and these are issues that are really at the forefront of the discourse, certainly in America, and I think in the UK and mm -hmm. uh, and in, in other places around identity and ethnicity and inclusion. So yeah, uh, uh, really um, uh, topical script, but also done in a way that's digestible done uh, you know with uh, more than a few laughs so it was a really great recipe uh to uh, to cook up and and uh yeah glad audiences are are, are enjoying it to this point definitely one of the best scripts that i read read and also if, if you don't know this little tidbit the, the working title of the script that we first read was fuck and mm -hmm. if you ever want an actor to read something just you know <laughs> call it fuck and you gotta at least read the first few pages <laughs> Um, and I mean, yeah, Cord is, is some talent. I mean, but I'm all about sort of sharing the love. So I thought I'd get you both to discuss the, the merits of the man sitting beside you. So I'm going to start with you, Jeffrey, because Sterling is so talented. I'm going, to, I'm going to speak about him like he's not here, by the way. But he has this ability to convey so much in his eyes. There's a real sadness in his eyes and so much profundity. It actually reminds me a bit of John Cazale, that kind of... Oh, wow. Wow. I'll what was, what was an on-screen sibling on this project? <laughs> um, you know... Sterling, first and foremost, is what um, what all really great actors are, smart um, and fully committed, but uh, dynamic and kind of uh, uh, surprising. You know, we, we're coming at you from a lot of different angles. There's uh, there's an, unex, you know, an unexpected quality to to his work and and uh, but at the same time, incredibly generous. And in this instance, like everyone who was involved, super passionate about being a part of this uh, project. He, you know, he says, and I love this, that he did, didn't want to work uh, during the time that we were filming uh, 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 this uh, movie, but that he read the script and said, I want to be a part of it, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and came with that level of commitment and brought all of his talents uh, to bear and, you know, annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and that was exactly what was called for. Yes. So it was just a wonderful partnership. Thank yeah. you, sir. I mean, I'm, I'm hesitant to be as nice about you, Jeff, because I since I've discovered you support Arsenal, which is <laughs> <laughs> who do you support? You it's Spurs. I'm Spurs. Yeah. No, of course come on, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sterling, I mean, this man next to you. This is one of the old timers. But how much? How much do you still learn when collaborating alongside actors like this? Uh, a tremendous amount. I it is an honor to share the screen with Mr. Wright. Uh, I've been deeply enamored with his work from the time that I began my career, because he's a little bit older than I am. So I've, I've had a lot to watch, a, bit. a lot of stuff to watch. Um, but it, it is, he's free. Jeffrey, Jeffrey is free. And that's what I sort of like. The first, I mean, from Basquiat to Peoples, to seeing him play Link in uh, in in uh, Top Dog Underdog, like you you talk about me having sort of an unexpectedness. Like there's always felt like he could just leap off of the stage, right? And that was the fun part about being on screen with him is that there was both this sort of like kinetic energy that existed in between. Now I wasn't a hundred percent sure exactly what he was gonna do, and that made me all the more excited to be in the scene with him right i think what i learned more than anything that was so sort of a reassuring thing for me is that i'm not that far off from what one of the masters does like i we approach the work in a very similar way i felt like it was a finding some 
someone who you were kindred with, like, oh, he likes to play just as much as I do. There's preparation. There is dogged preparation in order to get to that place, but the preparation is for that freedom. Man is free. Hold on. Just hold on one second. <laughs> hold on. Did I, did I say it right? Yeah. I said it right? Yeah. I got the cast? Thank you, yeah. sir. <laughs> My good friend here. <laughs> you better keep that now. Come on, man. Uh, but I was going to say, it's not just... That's real, that's real sterling right there. Thank you. Um, Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two very quick questions left. Uh, I mean, but I just wanted to say because it's not just me who's saying these nice things about your performance. I mean, the Academy have noticed. Obviously, congratulations on your Oscar nomination. I just want to ask. Thank you. Means to you, but I know it. You know, it's all quite silly in some ways, and art is subjective, and there's no such thing as the best. Blah 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 blah. But personally speaking, when you hear your name read out, how how does that feel? I think we've all already won. Yeah, uh, you know, just to be included. Uh, among the nominations, I think, is is a tremendous honor. Why? Because it comes from our peers who have said, yeah, yeah, you know, job well done. Yeah. We appreciate you. And that's that's super meaningful. That said, you know, this is not solely about the quality of our work. We always try to do good work. Yeah. And there's beautiful work that's been done this year and other years that wasn't recognized in this way but uh, the difference for I, for me in this instance and for us is that we had tremendous support from the studio uh, tremendous yeah. backing you know winning the toronto film festival people's choice award didn't hurt the no cause. not at all but uh orion amazon mgm have been super uh committed to making sure that our film got out there to audiences and got you know in front of our, our peers so that they could they could take in, uh, you know, what we did, and and uh, and the result has been they've, uh, you know, they've recognized us. It's also uh, great because we're a small film, shot in 26 days, you know, small budget, uh, and uh, at the same time, we think we uh, the story that we're telling is a big one, small film, big uh, big story. Yeah, and, and we make these films oddly enough because we want people to see them. So the more attention that is uh, that is brought to our film, the more likely it is to get in front of audiences. So, yeah, it's it's wonderful on on multiple levels. I'm really grateful. I'll say this on a, just a political level because we don't do it for the awards at all. But as Jeffrey's prone to say, if they're giving them out, we'll, we'll take them. And and you will take and them. also the access to opportunity that this kind of recognition gives cannot be underestimated. And so. Whether it's Jeffrey, myself, Coleman, uh, uh, Danielle, uh, Divine. Divine, what have you, like, there will be a, a different kind of access to opportunity that comes because of this sort of recognition. Um, and I don't take that for granted. I don't deserved, undeserved, whatnot. Like, I know, I know that it means something. So when people say, like, uh, you don't do it, we don't do it for that. We do it to tell a story well for people to see themselves in the stories that we tell. But I'm also fortunate, and I would I would be lying if I said it's not going to make a difference in terms of how my career moves forward. And just very, very quickly, I know I've been told I have to wrap, but I just, I can't let this opportunity pass by just asking one very quick thing to you, Jeffrey, because I saw the, the story that David Bowie would play you unreleased music. I just wanted to know how you two became friends. It's my last question, so. <laughs> oh, David and I? Yeah. Uh, be, well, uh, the first time we met was when um, I was in preparation for the film Basquiat, and I was painting in Julian Schnabel's studio. Uh, you know, I worked for about six months prior to filming to be, uh, you know, at ease, you know, painting and studying Jean-Michel Basquiat's work. At times, there would be, you know, more, you know two dozen of his actual paintings in the studio, and I would take images from one and images from another and try to recreate and just, you know, uh, just be as comfortable as possible. And one day I was on my knees working on a canvas and the door opened and in, in walked David. And uh, he kind of circled around quietly and he kneeled down next to me and he said, do you mind if I watch? And I said, uh, well, I think I'm going to have to get used to it because he had been cast as, uh, as Warhol. And that was, we had a laugh at that. And from that point on, he was as cool as, you know, one could possibly hope with me. He was wow. an incredibly generous man, super funny, 
And, uh, and, you know, he had had such a place in my life prior to that meeting. There was a period in my life or periods in my life where his music had been the score to certain phases. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just had such admiration for him. And it's funny because that album that we, uh, that he played for Gary and I that day on set has crept up recently. I was at an event and someone was showing um, a, wanted to show some uh, clips from a Moon Age Daydream, which is uh, a documentary about David. And they started playing this film. And this was about three weeks ago. And the first sounds in the film, there's a montage of uh, pieces of his music. And the first sound is from outside, from that album. And I perked up. And then it goes on to the first song in the documentary, and it's a song called Hello Space Boy from that album. And it was blaring at me. And it was just the most interesting thing. <laughs> it was really cool. Once again, David, you know, providing the score for a moment in my life. Oh. So, yeah, man. Um, I have to say, I miss his presence, you know, but still at times feel it because his work goes on, his art, you know, lives forever. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! Hey you guys! Hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!